Hey, what's up everybody? It's George coming at you with another free CCNA lab video again from CCNAWorkbook.com. Today I'm doing lab 4-10 configuring VLAN trunking protocol otherwise known as VTP. Alright, so for this lab uh, there's a little bit of prerequisites that we got to take care of. Uh, most of them I already have so of course, I'm not using GNS3. I have a real lab here at home. I only have two switches. I do not have a third switch. So I'm going to have to modify this lab to meet uh, my budget. So hope you guys don't mind that. I, I don't think you would. It's not a big deal. Uh, two switches is more than enough for a CCNA. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started and... Uh, Let's get the lab going then. So we don't need any routers at all. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that. So give me one second and I'll be right back ready to go. So once again I would like to remind you guys that uh, to be sure to go through the prerequisites and of course if you're like me and you only have two switches try and you know do something kind of in between so right now what I have is two switches connected through an ether channel uh, through fast ethernet ports 10 uh, 0 slash 10 through 12 I only have one ethernet uh, ether channel uh, and nothing else so I don't have a second ether channel going to another switch so because I only have two switches so uh, the good thing is that you can configure VTP through only two switches shouldn't be an issue just have to modify the objectives here so let's go ahead and get started with that then so okay configure switch one as the VTP server and switch two yeah, I'm gonna not read that as VTP clients set the VT VTP domain to Cisco on all two switches okay so the way we can do that is by going to configure terminal and from here we can type a VTP mode server so since this is switch one we're gonna go ahead and make this a server and it's already the server that's what it's telling me so we're gonna make VTP domain uh, call this Cisco and so as you can see it changed the VTP domain from null from nothing to Cisco so, all right, so that was that. So let me go ahead and uh, lock, uh, plug my console cable into switch number two, so we can configure it as a VTP client. So there we're on switch two. Configure terminal. Let's go ahead and do a VTP mode, and we're going to be a client. Okay, so now we're in client mode, and then VTP domain and then once again Cisco and I would like to remind you guys that the domain name is case sensitive so you want to be sure that when you're typing it you're typing it with the case in mind so Cisco all caps Cisco all caps and that should be um, good enough to get that going okay so next we want to configure VLAN 10 with the name development on the VTP server and verify that it propagates switch 2 and switch 3 properly um, on the VTP server. Okay, so. Okay, so switch 1 and be sure, be sure it propagates to switch 2 and 3 properly. Okay, so let me go back to switch 1 since that is our VTP server. And let's. There we are. So let's go ahead and go to uh, interface VLAN 10. Or the way we change our name is VLAN 10. Then type name. Then type development. And type that in. And that should um, uh, propagate to switch two and switch. Uh, well, just switch two in this case. So let me do an exit. Uh, exit again show VLAN so that should be development okay so switch one uh, 
part number one. Oh, I think I actually need to change this, if I'm not mistaken. So let me let me double check here that there was nothing having to do with that. No, actually, VLANs did not have anything to do with the prerequisites. So I'm assuming that this should work. So okay, let's go ahead and go back in. Okay, so we have on our on our uh, uh, server here, our VTP server, we have development, and let's go ahead and show VTP status. Uh, we've had a s two. Uh, we're on version number two, and our last revision was modified. Uh, well, I can't really tell because I don't have the time, but it was modified by this switch, so which is what sh we should expect anyway. So let's go ahead and go to switch two and verify that the VTP did carry through the VLANs. After all, this is VLAN trunking protocol even though really it should be called VLAN replicating protocol because that's really what it's doing so let's go ahead and show VLANs and that should propagate, yeah there you go uh, VLAN 10 there has development and it automatically assigned um, that there to VLAN 10 so that's uh, that's good so we have development and that was done by uh, let's check out show VTP uh, status and yeah we're on revision 2 as you can see and it was configured by uh, yeah you see 10.1.1.11 so that was switch 1 so that's it uh, set the VTP version to version 2 and secure the VTP domain by using the password uh, Cisco dollar sign 123 so let's go ahead and, and and do that so in order to do that what I gotta do is go back to the um, uh, switch number one so let's go ahead and move back to switch one plug that in I really need an access server <laughs> okay so have that alright so in order to do that we can do configure terminal uh, VTP version 2 uh, and then here at this point we can do VTP password and then type Cisco what is it, dollar sign 123 Cisco dollar sign 123 of course this is all case sensitive exit and then end and go ahead and uh, and just write all this stuff here so of course we have to go over to uh, switch to again and be sure that we have the same password on the switch if not the VTP will not uh, come up so so let's go ahead and do a configure term terminal and then VTP password the version should be modified without having to put it on switch 2 so just make sure we have the password the same so Cisco dollar sign 123 that should be the password and we should end that and then show VTP status and uh, we don't have a third version I'm not sure uh, oh, okay we're running version 2 yeah and this is our fifth revision and Cisco alright so that should this means that we we should be working up so we have VTP status up and going and um, one of the things you want to keep in mind that uh, the VTP password is not very secure if I were to actually just show VTP password um, there it is in clear text uh, so if somebody really wanted to know a password um, there it is really so what I would say VTP passwords I don't think are that important as long as you have a centralized server with uh, um, uh, only certain people that can access that server then shouldn't be too much of an issue as far as having a password either way if somebody that really wanted to know the password it's gonna be in there so there are other ways of implementing this so so yeah uh, that's it really we already set up our uh, 
uh, our VTP. So that was it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.